Come on, you've not been here in four months. Good morning. Good morning. Fantastic. Welcome to church. Welcome home. Uh, it is great to see you. It's great to be back. And today is our first hybrid church service. It's the first time that we are in church and live online. So good morning to everyone who is uh, watching us online, either live right now or later on Catch Up. Church, why don't we say, why don't we say hello? Woo! Happy days. And hello to anyone who is watching us in the hall, uh, also in our overflow, it's great to be wherever you are watching church right now. Uh, it is so good to be with you, it's so good to be back. Uh, who's missed being in church? Those who are here. Uh, for those who are watching on video, every hand in this place is up. Uh, fantastic, it's, it's great to see you, it's great to be back uh, together. Let's pray as we begin our time together. Father God, thank you for your faithfulness. Thank you for your protection, your love for us and your hand on our lives. Thank you for seeing us safely through this period so far and for bringing us back uh, together as a family. We pray your blessing on us today. Meet with us uh, wherever we are and however we are. Work in us, we pray, by your spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen. Lovely stuff. So, we have a song uh, to start with. Now, uh, we're going to do this differently depending on where you're watching. If you're with us in church this morning, we're not allowed to sing. If you are watching from home this morning, you are allowed to sing. And so, as the, as the video plays, uh, why don't you uh, just take time to uh, reflect on the words, to give your own thanks to God for his uh, faithfulness, his hand on your life. Oh, hang on. Has Nikki broken the computer? Uh, ignore that, that's okay. Sure? Yeah, yeah. Uh, there you go. Uh, <laughs> ignore that. Uh, where were we? If we, yeah, take time as, as the music plays to focus on the words, to give our own thanks to God for his faithfulness uh, in the past and his promise to protect us in the future. And if you're watching at home, why don't you sing along? Uh, thank you.
Amen. We thank God for the reminder that as he's been faithful uh, this far, he continues to see us through whatever the days ahead hold. And so why don't we pause and pray. And as we pray, we want to firstly give thanks. Uh, if you are here today or if you're watching us online today, uh, it is because God has spared you. Uh, God has been good to you and faithful to you. And we want to say thank you to God for his faithfulness and his protection. Uh, but also as we pray, we recognise that... Uh, for a lot of people, we, we, we thank God that nobody in our church family has uh, been lost to the virus, but a number of people in our church family have lost loved ones. And so as we pray, we want to thank God for his faithfulness, but we also want to pause and remember those who we've lost and pray for those who are mourning right now. Uh, for many folk in our church family, it would have been a difficult time not being able to go to the funeral uh, of loved ones who have died. And so as we pray, we thank God for his faithfulness, but we also pray for those who are grieving and who are mourning. Why don't we keep a moment of silence, uh, bring your own prayers of thanks to God, your own needs to God, and then I'll pray for us. Loving God, thank you for your faithfulness to us. Thank you for keeping us, protecting us. Thank you for your hand on our lives. Thank you that we can gather uh, back in church or begin to gather uh, back together as a church family. Today, accept our thanks, accept our praise as we worship a, a faithful, a loving, a dependable God. But Lord, would you also hear us as we bring before you our needs, trusting in our faithful God. Draw near to us as we remember perhaps friends or loved ones who have died. Be near to friends in our church family who have lost loved ones and are grieving. Place your arms around them, we pray. To those who are facing an uncertain future, bless them, provide for them, we pray. For those who are working so hard, uh, to combat the virus, our, our doctors, our healthcare workers, uh, carers, key workers in whatever roles, strengthen them, equip them, we pray. And for those of us in church, not being able to sing along just now was strange. And it should be because we were made to worship. We were created to sing. And so we pray that you would uh, bring it about that we can be back together and singing together uh, soon. In Jesus' name. Amen. Great stuff. I'd like to uh, take a moment to uh, come together around our giving. Now, uh, for those who are back in church, uh, the offering will be done a little bit different during this time. We won't pass uh, an offering bag around. We will, uh, just as we've done online through lockdown, uh, prioritise online giving. Uh, and if you have internet access, that is the easiest way to give online. Uh, if you head to our website, chingforkong.org.uk forward slash give, uh, you can uh, give online that way. Otherwise, if you uh, prefer to give by cash using the giving envelopes or cheque or whatever, um, then instead of the bags coming around, by the entrance there is the, uh, the white box. And if you're watching in the hall, it's the same down there. Uh, the white box by the door, uh, offering envelopes can be placed in there if you prefer. 
But we also want to pause and say hello and a special welcome to those who are uh, with us today for the first time. Uh, there's nobody new in church that I'm seeing, but if you're watching online and uh, you're new to our church family, we want to say a special welcome to you and invite you to connect with us. And the easiest way to do that, if you head to our website, chingfordcongdog.uk forward slash new, uh, and you can fill in the form online there, and we'd love to keep in touch with you, uh, to welcome you amongst us and see how we can support you and serve you uh, in the days ahead. So do please uh, keep in touch with us that way. Lovely stuff. Now, who likes my friend? Ah, oh. would anyone like to pick a name for my friend? Anyone? Ash, Isaiah, Mimi, Sylvia? Balloony. <laughs> Thanks, Steve. Okay. Any, any, any better name than Sean? Any? What do you think my friend might be called? Any guesses? Oh, come on. Who, who can come up with the best name that beats Balloony? No one? John. John. Joyce? Bob, I like that. Okay, so this is Bubble. And you have to forgive the drawing. The drawing's not very good because I did it. But does Bubble look happy? Yeah, yeah he's got a nice smile. You probably can't tell what it is, but it's a smile. And you know, lots of us go through life looking a bit like Bubble. We go through life with a nice big smile on our face and, and everyone thinks that we're fine and we're happy. But do you know what happens to Bubble? Even though he looks happy, as soon as things get a little bit difficult and you fall on hard times, <laughs> even though Bubble looks really happy, as soon as things get difficult, Bubble's smile is gone. But here's, if we had Bubble, should we call him Ben? Squeak. Squeak. <laughs> Bubble and Squeak. He looks just as happy, doesn't he? He's got the same smile as Bubble and he goes through life looking like everything's good. And, but there's something different about Squeak. Because when Squeak goes through hard times, oh! <laughs> okay. Let's, let's pretend that didn't happen. Um, <laughs> we'll edit that for the video. <laughs> okay, that's just destroyed the whole service. Do you, know, do you know, Squeak wasn't meant to pop. And so just pretend that Squeak didn't pop because there was something different about Squeak. There was something special inside Squeak that stopped him uh, falling apart even when things got difficult. Can we pretend that didn't happen? Those who are watching online, can you promise me not to share that video? Uh, and, and we'll just pretend that didn't happen, but... <laughs> That's li okay, how do we do the service now? Okay. <laughs> Have I got another one? No. Do you know what? Some of us will go through life, and, and, and church is full of those people. They turn up to church, and they're all smiles, and you say, how are you? I'll say, how are you? And you'll say... Fine, but then difficult times hit and maybe we're not fine after all. But the Bible says, even though science tried to disprove it, the Bible says that it's possible to have something different about you. That even when tough times hit, you can see them through and still have a smile on your face. That's what I'd like us to uh, chat about this morning. If you have a Bible, why don't you turn with me into Matthew's Gospel? And I'd love to read uh, from Matthew 6. <laughs> I'm wet. Uh, Matthew 6, and uh, I'll read from verse 25 to 34. Are we there? Jesus. 
Jesus says, that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life, whether you have enough food and drink or enough clothes to wear. Isn't life more than food and your body more than clothing? Look at the birds. They don't plant or harvest or store food in barns, for your heavenly Father feeds them. And aren't you far more valuable to him than they are? Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And why worry about your clothing? Look at the lilies of the fields and how they grow. They don't work or make their clothing. Yet Solomon, in all his glory, was not dressed as beautifully as they are. And if God cares so wonderfully for wildflowers that are here today and thrown into the fire tomorrow, he will certainly care for you. Why do you have so little faith? So don't worry about these things, saying, what will we eat, or what will we drink, or what will we wear? These things dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your Heavenly Father already knows all your needs. And so he says, seek the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need. So don't worry about tomorrow, for tomorrow will bring its own worries. Today's trouble is enough for today. Lots of you who are in church with us today right now are, are wearing masks. Uh, if you're watching at home, you get saved having to wear the masks. But masks right now are important. They may not be comfortable, but they keep us safe. I never thought I would find myself walking into a bank with a mask on. I thought I'd chosen a different path in life. The staff in Nat West in Chingford may have expected someone to walk into the bank with a mask on at some point in their career, but they, they didn't expect it to be the local pastor. When I walked into Nat West with a mask on, it was to give them money, not to demand it, but I never expected to walk into a bank with a mask on. So you know, one of the difficult things with wearing the masks is that I can't see what is behind your mask. I can see your eyes. I can't see whether or not you're laughing at my jokes. It sounds like you're not. Nothing new there. I can still see when you're sleeping, but I can't see a lot else. I can't see whether you're happy, whether you're sad, whether you're stressed, whether you're uh, yawning, it won't last forever, so I try not to. But it's hard to see behind the mask, isn't it? If you have a conversation with someone that's wearing a mask, it's difficult to pick up on the, all those non-verbal cues. You see, right now, there is a physical barrier hiding your face. There is a physical barrier hiding any emotion that you might otherwise display. But I wonder how often do we also hide behind unseen masks? How often do we go through life and say, I'm fine, when maybe we're not? And so how are you? How are you really today? Behind the mask, both the physical mask if you're wearing one, and behind the, the, the unseen mask that we all wear. How are you? How are you feeling? Maybe some of us will be feeling despair right now. 
Who's feeling tired? I am. A few hands. Some of us feeling tired. Who's lost a loved one during this time, or a friend? Maybe for some of us, grief. Who's excited for the future and things beginning to return to normal? Maybe some of us feeling hope right now for the days ahead. Who's worried about what the future might hold? Maybe some of us feeling anxious right now. Our emotions are natural, they are God-given, but the problem comes when our emotions control us instead of us controlling our emotions. Today I'd like us to think briefly about anxiety. Over the next few weeks, we're going to be going through a series called Behind the Mask. What is really happening behind the physical, but also the unseen mask? How are you, how are you really? And we're going to look at each of these uh, emotions, and what does the Bible have to say about each of them? Uh, today I'd like us to think about anxiety. Anxiety is a big one. Who's ever been worried about anything? The future, the present, all of us. Now for some of us, for some people, anxiety is is a full-blown medical diagnosis. For others, the doctor doesn't give it a label, but we worry. Some of us are anxious maybe about jobs, or our health, or finances, or our family, or things at school, or relationships, or things we turn on the TV or the news on your phone and you see what's happening in the country or in the world around us. Uh, we see uh, leaders or, or the lack of leaders and it makes us worry. When there's so much uncertainty, it is natural to be anxious. And when we're anxious, it's because we're uncertain about what's going on. We don't know how life will play out in the future, uh, or we don't know what the impact of things in our past will be on our lives. And Here's a deal. I'd love to uh, just tell you today, if you are feeling worried, or if you are feeling anxious, that anxiety is not a sin. Anxiety is a normal response to the uncertainty that we face in everyday life. But what I'd like us to think about this morning is, what do we do with that anxiety? When you're worried, what do you do with that worry? How long do you allow your worry to live in you? Anxiety, one person said, is a fear of not being in control. What do you do with that? Proverbs 12, verse 25, I love these words. It says, worry weighs a person down. An encouraging word cheers a person up. Worry weighs a person down. You see, if, if we don't control it, worry or anxiety can destroy you. It can destroy your entire body, it can make you ill, it can consume your mind. What do we do with worry? Just a couple of other verses I'd love to uh, share with us. 2 Corinthians 10 verse 5. Paul writes that we destroy every proud obstacle that keeps people from knowing God. We capture rebellious thoughts and teach them to obey Christ. Now the context of that verse is slightly different, but the principle is valid. The Bible suggests that we can control how we think. The Bible says that we can control what we do with our thoughts, that we can take them captive and make them obedient to Christ. Isn't that great? Here's what else the Bible says, 1 Timothy, uh, sorry, 2 Timothy 1 verse 7, Paul writes to Timothy, you'll know these words, that God has not given us a spirit of what? Fear, 
but of power, love and self-discipline. I'd like to invite you to this morning, take control of your thoughts. Let's go back to our reading. If you've got the Bible, it was Matthew 6, 25 through 34. And do you notice in those words that Jesus doesn't deny that worry or anxiety exists? He recognised that it does. But here's what he makes clear. Two things. Number one, worry does nothing. Look with me, verse 27. Matthew 6, verse 27. Jesus said, Can all your worries add a single moment to your life? And he asked it as a hypothetical question, but the answer is no. For people watching on video, I promise you there are people in church. They're just quiet. It's a hypothetical hypothetical question, but the answer is No. no. There we go. Worry does nothing. The second thing Jesus says is that when we trust in God, trust in God diminishes worry. Look with me, verse 32. These things, worrying, it says, dominate the thoughts of unbelievers, but your heavenly Father already knows all your needs. He says, so seek first the kingdom of God above all else and live righteously and he will give you everything you need needs. Jesus says worry doesn't do anything but if you trust in God that can take away our worry. But you know what I'd like us to look at this morning is how this passage starts. Look with me in verse 25. But Jesus says that is why I tell you not to worry about everyday life. That is why I tell you. Why? What is why I tell you? When we get to something like that in the Bible that says therefore, or and so, or that is why I tell you, what do we do? We look up. And so, uh, in your Bible, look with me. Look back. Look up. Let's flick back a page and look in the beginning of uh, Matthew chapter 5. One day, as Jesus saw the crowds gathering, he went up on the mountainside, sat down, his disciples gathered around him, and he began to teach them. And we start with the Beatitudes, where Jesus spends time telling his his followers, uh, God blesses those who are poor. God blesses those who mourn. God blesses those who humble. Uh, God blesses those who search for justice. God blesses those who are merciful. Uh, God blesses those who work for peace. God blesses those who are persecuted. God blesses, God blesses, God blesses. No matter how bleak your situation, God blesses. And then we carry on. Verse 12 in in Matthew 5, I love what he says. He says, be happy uh, when people mock you. He says, for a great reward awaits you in in heaven. And so God blesses. He says, and there is a a reward awaiting you in heaven. Then carry on and we get into chapter 6. He's still talking to his uh, followers in what we call the Sermon on the Mount. And uh, he starts chapter 6 talking about giving. And chapter 6, verse 4, he says, Give your gifts in private, and your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Let's not think about giving for a moment, but let's think about those words. Your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Verse 6. He says again, but when you pray, go away by yourself, shut the door, and pray to your Father in private. Then your Father, who sees everything, he says it again, will reward you. If the Bible says something, we need to know it. If it says it twice, we definitely need to know it. Your Father, who sees everything, will reward you. Some of you need to hear that today. That your Father sees everything and will reward you. Let's carry on. Still in chapter 6, verse 8. Jesus said, Don't be like them, for your Father knows exactly what you need, even before you ask him. Do you know that your Father knows exactly what your needs are? 
He knows exactly what your fears are and your worries are. And then we get into the, to verse 9 and he goes through, so pray like this and Jesus teaches his followers uh, what we know as, as the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven. When we pray we remember that we have a heavenly Father. In that prayer we pray, may your will be done. It reminds us that God has a, a plan, a purpose for us and for our worlds. Give us this day our daily bread. Remind us that God provides all that we need. Lead us not in temptation, but deliver us from evil. Remind us that God protects us. And so, here's what we get. God blesses. There's a great reward. Your Father sees everything and will reward you. Your Father knows everything everything that you need and all that you face. You have a heavenly Father who has a plan and a purpose for your life and the world that you live in. You have a heavenly Father who promises to provide for all your needs and to protect you. I don't hear an amen. amen. Isn't that great? 1 John 5 verse 14 says, And we are confident that he hears us whenever we ask for anything that pleases him. And since we know that he hears us when we make our requests, we also know that he will give us what we ask for. So that says if we ask God... When we ask for anything that pleases him, God answers that prayer. Here's the deal. God will answer the prayer that he told you to pray. The prayer that acknowledges him as Heavenly Father. The prayer that says, I know you have a plan for my life, I want to see it. Because right now I'm struggling to see it. The prayer that says, this is what I need, God will you provide. The prayer that says, this is what I'm facing, will you protect me? They are prayers that God told us to pray, and so we know that it pleases him, and so we know the Bible says that God will answer that prayer. Back in today's reading, this is why I tell you not to worry. Isn't that great? Because we have a Heavenly Father who blesses us, who rewards us, who sees everything, who knows what we need, who, who has a plan for our life, a purpose for our life, who, who provides for us, who protects us. Therefore, says Jesus, don't worry about tomorrow. What's tomorrow got in store that your Heavenly Father can't deal with? Can I invite you today to choose to focus? No. You have a choice today. You can choose to either focus continually on your troubles and things you can't control. Or you can choose to focus on the promises of God, the provision of God, the protection of God, the presence of God. Why don't we pray? As we pray, can I invite you to bring before God whatever things cause you worry. Whatever perhaps you are anxious about right now. Remember those words from Proverbs? Worry weighs a person down. What's weighing you down right now? I love Paul's words to the Philippians where he writes, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God what you need and thank him for all he has done then you will experience God's peace, which exceeds anything we can understand. His peace will guard your hearts and your minds as you live in Christ Jesus.
And so as we pray, as we bring our needs, our worries before God in prayer, I pray that you would know those words to be true. I pray that you would know the peace that only God can give in your life. Let's pray. Father, thank you for your living words. Thank you for your uh, faithfulness. Thank you for your presence with us. And Father, I pray that each of us might know your presence with us in a very real way. Whatever worries might be weighing us down. As we bring them before you right now, would you take them from us? We pray for the uh, very real and difficult situations that so many are facing right now. Would you meet them where they are? Strengthen them, encourage them, support them, provide for them, protect them, we pray. But we also pray for each one of us that you would give us the strength to control our reactions and our response to those things. Give us the strength and the grace today by your Spirit to change our mindset. Help us today to focus on things that are guaranteed. Help us to, uh, to focus on your promises, on your provision, on your protection, on your purpose for our lives, on your presence in our lives, on your peace guarding our hearts and our minds and not on the things that we can't control. Work in us right now by your spirit we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. As we continue in uh, an attitude of prayer, another song is going to play. And uh, why don't we again reflect on the words as uh, the song plays. If you're watching at home, you're welcome to join in. Uh, but continue to allow God to move and to work in you.
Um, Septimus and Justicia, uh, sorry you're down there almost by yourself uh, with Sally and Sophie and Ralph, but great to see you uh, with us in church today. And yeah, uh, if you've joined us online since we started uh, our time together this morning, uh, a very warm welcome to you. We'd love to connect with you, uh, so do uh, hang around. And if you're with us for the first time, do uh, click the link to connect with us and keep in touch. That would be great. Um, straight after we finish here, or soon after we finish, in about 20 minutes at 12 o'clock, uh, if you are watching online, uh, and would like to catch up with other people on Zoom afterwards, or if you're here in church with us today and can get home quickly and would like to share with others on Zoom, uh, then as usual we meet together on Zoom at 12 o'clock and it's the usual meeting ID that you need that will come up on the screen uh, hopefully around about now. Uh, the meeting ID as always is 970-511-5796 and uh, we'd love to see you uh, at 12 o'clock on Zoom uh, to say hi and to share together. Uh, small groups are all meeting this week and so if you're uh, not yet part of a small group but would like to join do head online to our website uh, chingforcong.org.uk forward slash groups uh, find a group that meets at a convenient time and sign up we'd love to uh, share with you but those who are already part of a group we look forward to seeing you this week every group is meeting this week including uh, Sophie and Ralph's Thursday evening uh, fortnightly group uh, will be on this week. Uh, Wednesday prayer will be on as always on Zoom at two o'clock on Wednesday. Uh, Children's Church, we have our, our, our Zoom uh, catch up next Saturday at 7pm and it will be the last Children's Church Zoom before we break a little bit over summer. Oh. Oh. Uh, but we look forward to seeing you uh, on Saturday evening on Zoom. Uh, that's great. Um, food Bank. Uh, food Bank will be open as normal this week but that's not what I want to tell you about Food Bank. What I need to tell you about Food Bank is, right now our Food Bank is more important perhaps than ever before. Uh, during lockdown we saw a massive increase in the number of people uh, needing to use the food bank. At some points we are seeing uh, over 60 households a week coming through for food. Uh, food bank is run and staffed entirely by volunteers and for the last uh, how many years? What's that? Seven. For the last seven years has been uh, run by Julia and she's done a great job of leading our food bank and we're so grateful to her. Um, Julia has uh, decided that now is uh, as good a time as any to have a bit of a rest uh, and that she would like to take a step back from running the food bank. Um, and so I put it out to us as a church that we are recruiting. Uh, we are on the lookout for uh, someone or some people uh, who perhaps feel a calling uh, to help serve in our food bank. If you, could, uh, if you might be interested in helping to uh, facilitate and organise and run our food bank, it doesn't mean that you have to do everything, but to make sure that everything is done. Uh, and perhaps take on some of the admin stuff uh, so that Julia is able to step away uh, from the work that she's been doing for the last seven years. Please do speak to myself or Julia uh, if you'd like to find anything out uh, or if you might be uh, able to help us by serving in the food bank. One other thing, we're back as normal next Sunday, so we'll be in church as well as online. And so if you would like to be in church with us next week, we repeat the same cycle. If you don't have access to the internet, the uh, phone uh, registration will open again tomorrow morning. Uh, so do phone the church anytime from tomorrow if you'd like to come to church next Sunday, but you don't have internet access. And if there's no one here, leave a message uh, with your name and your phone number and how many people would like to come. And if you have internet access, the online registrations will open again next week, Thursday. Thursday uh, for next Sunday. Has anyone else got anything exciting to share? I've not been able to do this for weeks, for months. Uh, have I missed anything? Anyone got news? Uh, no? Uh, you're boring lot. Okay. Uh, in which case uh, we'll, we'll close and uh, look forward to seeing you uh, very soon either in a small group during the week or next week back in person. But until we see you again, uh, may the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with you and remain with you always. Amen. Have a lovely week.